Hello dear viewers, welcome to my channel Science to Technology. In today's show, Rocket Monday, we're gonna talk about Bellatrix Aerospace. So let's dive right into it. Well, what the heck is this uh, strange thing, Bellatrix Aerospace? Well, it's an Indian private startup company. I have no idea why they have selected this name and it's nothing to do with Harry Potter, but this is what it is and it's a Bangalore based basically it's India's Silicon Valley so to say and it was established in 2015 so it's not very old company and their focus is not only on rockets making rockets and providing launch services they are also focusing on R&D that's a bit different compared to other uh, launch providers so they are playing a bit of a longer game so to say now what are the assets what are the tools they bring into the uh, fold so to say for indian space industry well they are making a small satellite launch maker named chetak and uh, it's nothing some fancy it's not something that is gonna be comparing against saturn 5 or uh, falcon booster or something like that it's a small satellite launch maker however on top of that they are providing satellite propulsion options now this is very critical as we our satellites started to become more and more efficient in terms of basically more efficient solar panel in terms of more efficient uh, electrical communication standards basically everything about our satellite is much more efficient compared to 20 years ago so flat out that inherently means we can make satellite much smaller so that is why they are banking on that that's the cube site will be the next big thing however because these things are generally launched in low earth orbit they have a severe side effect which is drag basically atmosphere is like no bro you are not high enough come down so when atmosphere does that you have to fight against it for example iss international space station has giant soviet boosters to push it up again not boosters would really push it much but you get the idea like it has to be reboosted every year sometimes multiple times a year so uh, everything that is in low earth orbit has to fight it on top of that if you go to geostation which is the most upper uh, satellite useful satellite bank there another kind of problem is there you're not going to be falling into earth because of like you know atmospheric drag maybe if very bad solar wind happens uh, it might push you inside but that will take thousands of years uh, the biggest issue is once your lifetime is over basically let's say five year to ten year once you are Cross that you have to push yourself above your geostationary orbit into graveyard orbit which is yeah, here's your geostationary here's your graveyard orbit so you have to increase your delta v so you end up in the graveyard orbit you have to basically clear up that space because that space geostationary space does not have too many slots so for that reason it has to be kept completely clean any company that is putting that uh, putting uh, basically satellite there they have to be responsible of disposing of it and if you fail to dispose let's say for some reason your satellite malfunction you have to send another uh, recovery system to remove it out of the place it's not something that can be taken lightly for those sort of scenario those satellites have huge rocket basically you think like okay nine ton satellites are way too big yes even with old electrical technology the satellite is not that heavy satellite is only few tons but remainder is just propellant uh, mono, uh, mono propellant and chemical systems that are needed to run that so they are focusing on that though so this small team they are focusing on that they're gonna provide a small launch provider uh, so CubeSat you can directly launch on top of that to make sure your uh, lower thought speed satellite does not crash into the atmosphere let's say every few months you will be utilizing their service and let's say if you are making a geostation SF for uh, direct to home services uh, net slow speed net communication or high bandwidth communication or something like that you can utilize their unit technology R&D and all that so you can have a satellite which is much more more efficient in terms of basically how mass wise so to say and their main goal their what what is their motto is basically reduce the barrier to entry basically any Tom Dick and Harry can do it that's what they are trying to do basically any private universities in India should be able to afford their services that's the main selling point so Indian students if they want to launch a satellite they're like okay we're gonna talk to these people and we're gonna you know figure something out that's the main point so let's talk about this rocket, uh, this Chetak rocket. Now this is not a big rocket I specified. So it's only launching 150 ki uh, kilograms to 700 kilometers sun synchronous orbit. It's surprisingly popular orbit, sun synchronous orbit for Earth imaging systems, uh, basically Google Earth, so to say. So it's not a big rocket, but it's more than capable enough for launching multiple uh, CubeSats or one, uh, you know, medium sized uh, satellites. So it's uh, capable. It's not something like, okay, what's the use of it? There is more than enough demand for it. That's not an issue. It's a two stage rocket. It's not like India's PSLV which has four stage it's a two stage system now it is utilizing fuel of the future basically it has liquid methane and liquid oxygen now you might like okay that should require some advanced engine technically yes and technically no because they are utilizing engine made by relative space a eon engine basically a eon I, I don't know silent words in english is beyond my understanding so this engine is a 3d printed engine and it's an electrically driven turbo pump engine because if you have to understand this very thoroughly 
every rocket system is just a fuel tank so if what will happen if you take let's say liquid methane and liquid oxygen you're going to get a flamethrower to take that flamethrower and make them into a rocket engine you need to pressurize that system now pressurizing when i'm talking about pressurizing it it's not a uh, basically oh just uh, put some helium in there though no. it requires insane amount of power as in megawatts of power as in hundreds of megawatt of power in some scenarios like uh, you know raptor engines and things of that nature it's ludicrously power hungry system so to do that generally there is a small rocket which powers the the turbine of uh, basically of the big uh, system and that pressurizes the system so basically there is a small rocket firing and that is turning this uh, turbine and that turbine is pressurizing the main fuel and then main fuel is firing so it's ludicrously complicated so you check the main chamber and assembly it's super easy it's just a fancy uh, bell nozzle which has a uh, you know cooling channels built it's not complicated the moment you start to introduce that uh, pre burner technology basically where you have fuel burning or something like that then it becomes ludicrous and if you go to older technologies like uh, used in uh, soviet systems or current russian systems they have a independent uh, you know fuel tanks uh, catalyst and oxidizer and water tanks to make sure the turbine does not melt so you can understand that part is very very complex so you need a lot of power but for a small rocket like this you don't need that much so what there is a solution is using electrical motors motors are ludicrously powerful you don't have to worry about like this tiny is like yes exactly the size is more than enough for 50 horsepower so basically your average uh, low budget car so more than the power wise electric motor is like bro i got this i can easily turn it then the problem because how the heck you gonna drive it there's the saving grace of rockets they don't run for very long so even first stage will not run for like 10 minutes or 20 minutes like that it's barely gonna run in few minutes single digit minutes for that reason lithium ion has enough oomph right now that it can do that basically it can pull it off and electron rocket company has actually proven that they have actually launched system on that so it's a known tested tech so that's what uh, the selling point is and using liquid methane and all that it has the advantages of making the uh, 3d system much more simpler to do so first stage rocket will have four engine four engines and then second stage will have one engine so it's a rather simple system but this is not their long in term, like you know 50 year plan the 50 year plan is basically satellite propulsion now in that satellite propulsion, right now what if you go to them what will they sell you they will sell you microwave electro thermal thrusters you're like what the heck is that basically it's a unique uh, option that they are providing the idea is you will take electrical energy be it from solar panel be it from rtg be, be it from whatever you're going to take the electrical and you're going to take a prop uh, fluid propulsion gas whatever have you you will take mass and tada it has your rocket now you may think that sounds more or less like uh, ion engines technically true however the main advantage of using microwaves instead of uh, electrical system other electrical options is that it has uh, basically it's smaller compared to every other chemical option but it has several propellant as a viable fuel because you have to understand xenon is awesome but it's also awesome in terms of how much a bank hole is gonna do basically your bank it will not destroy your bank balance it will destroy your bank it's that's how expensive it is that's why when starling started to build their system they're like yeah we can't ex uh, you know uh, expect to like f fuel all these thousands of satellites with xenons uh, xenon i'm saying yeah xenon x and on it will simply not work it will be too expensive so they went to argon it's cheaper this puppy this puppy is like i don't even care you have multiple option and when i say multiple option i mean it basically you can go from xenon if you have the money you can go for there it's gonna like i got this you want to argon it's like i got this no problem you're like what if i want to use oxygen it's like bro i got this what if you want to use nitrogen it's like bro i got this what if you want to use water this will also do that so that's the main selling point it has multiple propellant options so basically if some student is building it they're like bro all i can afford is distilled water no problem and if let's say some satellite companies like yeah we want a bit more oomph uh, than like you know water system yeah go with nitrogen somebody is like to this is a research satellite we can afford things go xenon man go yolo so that's the ceiling point of this and it's smaller now the main targeting point of this is basically satellite propulsion basically they want to go to a satellite manufacturer like a geostationary satellite manufacturer and be like bro if you utilize our technology your satellite will be literally you can put pack more equipments you can do that basically pack even more powerful solar panels or more powerful uh, transmitters and all that or simply bigger antennas just to improve your signal capturing efficiency and you will save a lot of money because again your satellite will be lighter because this technology has much higher specific impulse compared to any other system that you utilize normal monopropellant and it's non-hazardous because again water it's i'm pretty sure human children can manage water so that's their main uh, selling point 
So what we can expect in the future? Now you have to understand they are playing a much longer game. They are not longer just like you know let's make a bigger rocket out there. So they are like kind of Elon Musk in that regard. Uh, so their partnership is not only with ISRO, basically Indian Space Re uh, Research Organization. They are also talking in talks with DRDO, basically India's. Uh, Department of Defense, so to say, Department of Research and Development Center, so to say. So this technology, DARPA, basically, Indian DARPA, they are also in talks with Indian DARPA because the, uh, DRDO is responsible for uh, military communication satellites. So making sure that satellite remain in like, you know, orbit for much longer and they have much higher, you know, payload capacity, that is awesome. So because they have like, you know, communication with uh, the military division and the aerospace division, that's awesome. And because they know this microwave thruster is not the best thrusters in uh, technically speaking it's very good for what it is it's just not like you know it's more like a, a brunt full sentiment so they are also researching hall effect thrusters now you, you must be familiar with the fact that it is a real thing it is sold in the market then what's the point they are developing it for indian market and they are also they have certain uh, magic sauce they can put into this that will make it more uh, you know viable on top of that this itself is like you know these are like you know 10 year goal then they have a very long term goal which is magnetoplasma dynamic thrusters and I'm like, I have heard of that. Well, you must have. This is the most powerful system that in using uh, basically ion systems. Basically, you take a gas and you take electricity, you get a rocket out of it. It is very close to an actual uh, you, you burning liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen. Basically, the amount of thrust it gives is very good because ion engines, they are awesome in terms of their mileage, but they are useless in terms of their thrust. They can't do anything. They can't move anything. Basically, you are firing them. Uh, you have to fire them for like, you know, further than Mars and Pluto. Then you'll be like, oh, now you are getting the benefit. Basically, the pickup is very slow. So, magneto, uh, Magnetoplasma dynamic thrusters, they are ludicrously powerful. Consequence, they require hundreds of megawatt of power. Yes, you heard that right, hundreds of megawatt. Basically, even the solar arrays of ISS cannot do that. You have to run them out of a nuclear power plants. Uh, basically, the thing that NASA is developing, which we call uh, NASA's kilo watt reactor. So that's the whole point. They are developing on that also right now. So uh, once the reactors start to fly in the space, they will have a technology ready to go. It's like, bro, we got this. So I'm very uh, surprised by their uh, long-term thinking. I'm not, I generally see many Indian companies that are like, yeah, dude, you are only thinking five minutes ahead. These companies genuinely surprise me. It's like, okay, we are thinking one step ahead, another step ahead, on top of another. And we have enough financial backing from big enough players that's like, bro, we are settled, we're gonna do this. So I'm very happy with this. And I really want to see them succeed. So this was my presentation on Bellatrix Aerospace. Don't ask me about the name. Uh, so I hope you liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst a friend. Uh, that will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I'd urge you to press this like, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. And please leave a comment because I try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.